Welcome to the Move Freely podcast, where you will learn skills that help you move freely in every aspect of your life. Right, so in studio today with me, I have Peter King in charge of Peter King Coaching. And what we're going to be looking at today is how to form a new habit. We're all heading towards the end of this year. Thank goodness 2020 is almost over. And as with every new year comes new goals, new plans, and new habits that we would like to form. So welcome, Peter. And perhaps the more we chat, the more you can just share a little bit about who you are and what you do. Ooh, okay. Well, um, you know, I think the, the, the basic principle of where I'm coming from is I like to facilitate people's growth. And I do that through one-to-one coaching. I train people to be coaches. And, I, you know, I think my, my big passion really is just getting people from where they are to where they want to be as fast as possible. That's my thing. Um, I love it. I love my work. And, yeah, you know, I think one of the big challenges that people face in this time um, and I mean, we've had some fascinating, well, not even fascinating, I think it's scary, the COVID stuff. Um, and, you know, everyone's been through a bit of a rough ride. So I think, um, you know, if we talk about New Year's um, sort of uh, resolutions, mm-hmm. stroke habits, I think often what people do is they do the whole, um, let's make it a revolution. Um, and that becomes a problem because, you know, they try and overdo and overstretch themselves. Oh, I must do this, must lose weight, I must get fit, I must do, you know, stop smoking or drink less. I mean, a hundred different things. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think, you know, the, the, the bottom line is, is that habits are interesting creatures. Um, and they have been formed over years. So, so, Courtney, what sort of habits have you got up your sleeve that you go, mm, just as an example? Ones that I already have instituted or ones that I'm wanting to institute? Well, a bit of both, maybe. <laughs> just to, you know, make it interesting. So, you know, the, the habit that I currently have is that I love to sleep. So I love Ooh. to have a slow wake up in the mornings. I'm definitely sleeping longer than more people that I know and Mm. you know I love that but I also there's something about getting up before the rest of the world and it's I look Mm. at my diary because every year I've got the resolution and even looking at my one from for this year it says get up at 6 a.m so that I can exercise Mm. or I can meditate or I can journal and that resolution just rolls over from year to year (laughs) good. what time do you normally get up I usually get up between 7.30 and 8. Oh, okay. So do you actually have to be anywhere at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock? No, I don't. Okay. So firstly... mm -hmm. I live in Cape Town. I live in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And if I had to be at a place, it would definitely be running along the promenade or running on the mountain or having an early morning swim so okay so so 6 a.m is what you want yes (laughs) okay (laughs) so um i think firstly what what we need to do is just actually reflect on you know how it is how do we create new habits because even the simplest of habits you know like taking your vitamins or um you know having a cup of sort of warm water maybe with a slice of lemon in it um, or something a little bit more extreme like um, you know running along the prom um, at 6 a.m <clears throat> yes okay um, <laughs> you know I think I think the, the the there's some basic principles which maybe if we just I just approach them um, and see what you think so I think the first thing about a habit is we are actually creatures of habit now, what that means is that if I say to you, whenever you get up or, you know, when it, whatever you are doing, there is usually some form of routine. So perhaps you get up, go to the bathroom, then go and have a cup of tea, um, then get dressed or have a shower first. You know, there are certain things that you get done 
um, and they run usually run in a, in a quite a clean sequence. Um, yeah. You know, the classic example of this is taking a shower. Now, if you and it, it, you know you can practice this and just notice it, because we are creatures of habit, we have this situation where if we've taken a shower and we come out and dry ourselves we will always dry ourselves in the same way. And it's seldom from top to bottom or bottom to top. It's often we'll wipe our face, then we'll do under our arms, and then we'll do a leg, and then we'll do the other leg, and then we'll do our tummies. Whatever the sequence is, it's pretty consistent. Right. And what, <laughs> I mean, does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. I know okay. that when I get into the shower, I'm always with the face first, and so it goes. So that's yeah. spot on. So, so I think the, the, the fascinating thing is, is then I take you out of your, your, your standard shower place and I put you in a, a hotel or a, someone's friend's place and they don't have a toilet in the shower room for whatever reason. Now, in your bathroom, you would put your leg on the toilet to, to um, dry off, you know, your toes and stuff. Yeah. And when you get to the drying of your toes and there's nothing to put your foot on, it becomes very uncomfortable. It's the most weirdest thing. Ah, uh, now what do I do? Uh, I suppose I've got to bend down. Oh no, that doesn't feel right. Yes, it's, it's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> and I, th I think the thing is, is that when we recognise that we are very sequential, um, and that we do certain things in a certain way every day, then we can start taking control of our habits. So, um, and some people. Um, are very, let's call it consistent in, in how they run those sequential habits. We get up, as I said just now, we go to the bathroom, we have a cup of tea or whatever that thing is. Yes. The trick is a simple one. And that is if we can place something in between a pre-existing, the word there is pre-existing, um, place something in between pre-existing habit and link it very strongly, fundamentally, we've got a better chance of making this new habit work. Okay. Yeah? So let me give you, give you a little tiny story, um, which, um, you know, is, is, for me, it was quite, quite very simple and it just illustrates the fact. Um, this is when I was practicing in the UK. So this lady, a very prim lady came to see me and she said, look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to get pregnant with my husband. So I said, oh, okay. Um, I mean, you do know about the, the birds and that. She said, don't, don't be silly, just be ridiculous. You know, of course I know about that stuff, you know, really. And I was like, okay, so, um, <laughs> um, you know, cheeky, cheeky me being who I am. Anyway, so, so she said, the problem is I've got, I need to up my vitamin intake before I decide I'm going to get pregnant because I want to be a tip top peak. Okay. So what the problem is, well, I've got a pill bottle upstairs and I've got a pill bottle downstairs and I keep forgetting to take them. I need to take them twice a day. And I just keep forgetting. And I was like, Hmm. Okay. So I quickly did the sense check as in, does she really want to get pregnant? And does her husband really want her pregnant? And she was right. like, no, no, it was all clear. So it wasn't like there was a thing in the way or a block or an obstacle. I said, okay, so, do you brush your teeth every day? And she looks at me with that kind of look on, you know, when someone's disgusted, they've, of course I brush my teeth every day. What do you think I am? Twice a day, in fact. It's like, ah, excellent. I said, now, all I want you to do is, first of all, do you have, and I, I pulled out, sort of, I measured in the air, a piece of string about this long, a half a meter long. And she's like, a uh, piece of string. Uh, uh, cotton, will that do? I said, yeah, is it strong? Oh, I've got a piece of twine at home. I said, could you just cut a piece this long? And I was, you know, obviously in the air. She said, yeah, yeah. I said, and then what I want you to do, I made a big fuss of this one. I want you to take this piece of string and, and tie it around the, the lid of the, of the pill bottle. She says, yeah, okay. I said, and then I want you to take the other end of the string and tie it around your toothbrush. I mean, I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so she said, uh, okay. I said, and then, you know, when you grab your toothbrush, your pill bottle will come and you'll remember to take your pills. <laughs> so she, looked, she looks at me, she says, okay. So I said, I promise you it'll work. 
She looks at me, she says, okay. And she, we carry on talking about other things. About halfway through the session, I said, just as a little reminder, I want you to take that piece of string and tie it around the top pull, but I'm using my hands and everything. You can't see me, but hand up, tie it around, make it nice and tight. And then the other side on your toothbrush, make sure it's tight. And of course, just it's just a reminder. And she's like, I heard you the first time. Like, okay, cool, just check it. And then we carried on talking about babies and pregnancy, da da da. Um, and um, right at the end, just before she went, I said, so you, you remember, hey, piece of string, round the pill bottle, round the toothbrush, it'll always happen. See you in two weeks. She's like, okay. And off she went. Two weeks later, I said to her, so how's it going? She said, I'm taking my pills every day, twice a day. I said, excellent. So did you manage to tie the string? She said, oh, don't be ridiculous. And I said, oh, really? She said, of course. Of course, I just, you made me attach the two together. I can't separate them now. Because, of course, that's what I was doing. Right. Um, th does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and that's the point, is, is that what I'd done was I'd linked a pre-existing that she was doing every day. And one of the biggest challenges with habits, especially if, it's a, if we're trying to do it them every day, is that Monday to Friday, we do one set of things. Saturday and Sunday, we often do other things. Yes. So if you're trying to, let's say, link a habit to getting in the car and going to work, and then on Saturday morning you don't, you broke, you will break the habit. Right. Or it's harder to keep the habit going because the association isn't there. Okay. You know? Got you. So if, and the problem with habits or pro challenge, I suppose we should say, excuse me, is that if, the person wants to only do it every second or third day, it's very tricky for the psyche to absorb this. What I say to people is if you want to do a habit, do it every day. What people have a problem with, especially with exercise is, but I don't want to exercise every day. Okay, but that's because perhaps they're doing too much on the one day. And all I'm saying is that if somebody wants to exercise, why not do a bit of exercise every day? Yes. Um, and it doesn't have to be 5Ks or 10Ks every day. Ah, oh, that's what I want to do. It's like you do four or three or four or two or one, whatever. And you do it every day so you can manage it. Because the other thing about habits is that often we think, well, Susie down the road, she's doing 5Ks. I'll do 5Ks too. And you do that for three days and then fall over. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So the basic trick, it's a really simple basic trick here, is to fundamentally link the pre-existing. Now, in your case, it's interesting because you want to get up at six. Yes. Yeah? But there's no need to get up at six. So the drive is not strong enough. So yeah, there's, there's motivation. So I mean, if, you know, if um, the dog needed to go out at 6 a.m., this would be easy or the partner kicked you out of bed, or do you know what I mean? You, you've got nothing, no reason to get up. It, it makes it a lot harder. Yes. And I throw this, I throw this comment out, which freaks um, some of the therapists out completely, which is there is no such thing as a self-motivated person. And they go, what? We all, the, reason, the reasons we are doing, gonna do something is something outside ourselves. So, Let's suppose you wanted to um, exercise and you had um, your best mate as your, um, your, 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 running, your running friend, your exercise buddy, yeah. And you said, I'll meet you on the prom at six or half past six, because you've got to get up, wake up. And they were very reliable. It would be much harder for you to not build the habit because there'd been expectations. Right. An outside expectation. So, you know, you say to me, I don't need to be anywhere at first thing in the morning. So, and I love sleeping. Well, what's better than sleeping for most people? Like, oh, just another half hour, just 10 minutes. You know, sit, <laughs> take the alarm and put it on snooze, bit more snooze, bit more snooze. You know, you know, we can all snooze for two hours if we are clever enough, you know. Um, so so the, the challenge, the challenge we've got um, I think with um, <laughs> uh, you getting out of bed is that what's the reason? 
You know? Right. And we then would have to find a good connection as in something to link it to. Now, for some people, they, they can make that connection. Um, and one of the ways they would do it is um, they would start off going, right, I'm going to put my running clothes out. Well, this is what I, one of the things I would suggest, especially because this is very common, by the way. Okay. Um, so put my running clothes out, put my, put my trousers, my, my top, put my shoes, socks, everything out, ready to rock and roll. And when I get up, perhaps even before I go to the loop, I climb into those. Got you. Now, a couple of things go on there. One is you've already started building that association. Two, even though you're only half awake, you don't have to scrabble around for, where am I? Oh, my bottoms. Oh, maybe they're in the wash. Oh, damn, man. Oh, oh well, maybe next to tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. It's fine. No? Yes. So if everything's out and ready, now you're, you're, you've got a good starting position which is a, a really important challenge. The next thing is to get you out of bed. Yeah? Yes. I mean, that's the hardest part, right? <laughs> well, well, you say that. Even if I got you out of bed and, think, and your clothes were, you know, something here and something there and something in the wash, but you didn't want to wear that, you know, you would be, you know, you'd be like, oh, stuff it. Yes. So we've got to make our life easy. And unfortunately, making our life easy takes a bit of effort. So the night before, I put the clothes out. Now, on a subconscious level, my system goes, oh, we're going for a run tomorrow. You know? yes. And subconscious is very powerful. So we're telling ourselves that's what we're going to do. Then, um, if we can't get out of bed, what we can do is we can go and get ourselves an alarm clock. This funny <laughs> thing that goes beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Wait for it and put it so that you can hear it in the hallway. Interesting. Not even in the bedroom. Yes. Huh? Yes. And the other thing is it must do is it must get louder and louder. You get those alarm clocks until it's screaming at you. Beep, 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 beep. So, ah, I'm going to get up. <laughs> no, that's not necessarily going to do the job. But there's your first association because you, you put the thing off and then go and fall back into bed. Right. But if there's another one lurking somewhere, now you have to, you, after the, uh, on the second alarm that goes off, what tends to happen is you go, oh, right, then I'll get up. Yes. You know? So to rely on one alarm clock beside your bed is... Um, you know, crazy. Why? Because you can just stretch your arm out and go, boom, and it's off. Yeah. And peace reigns. Whereas if this alarm clock is on the other side of the room or down the hall or wherever it is that you can hear it, um, and it does, and the other thing is it mustn't stop eventually. Some of these alarm clocks after about a minute goes beep, beep, and then it's finished. <sighs> I just had to put up with it for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yes. Now, there's your, there's your association because you set it every night. You have your, clo your clothes out every night. Got you. The next important thing is that if you're used to getting up at half past, half past seven or eight, you only ever start this process by, let's say, quarter past seven. You start setting your alarm for quarter past seven. Okay. Because you're used to getting up at this time between half past seven and eight, probably erring on the side of eight, but let's, let's not pretend we didn't, we, that's not true, yeah? Yes. So if we say quarter past seven as, as consistent thing, the system starts getting used to, that's the time to get up. Give it a week, maybe 10 days, and then you move it to seven. Or if you're feeling really bold, quarter to seven. Depends. I would I would go in a small gradient chunk because gradient is a very important thing when it comes to habits. Okay. So I might go quarter past seven, seven o'clock, quarter to seven, half past six, quarter past six, six o'clock, over a month or two. Love that idea. Yeah. Mm. But you've got to do it. All th the thing about habits is you've got to do it, and the gradient of it will be the difference that perhaps makes the difference. Yes. 
the next thing. Mm -hmm. Just okay. something that I've realized is, you know, you always see things like it takes 21 days to start a new pattern and 100 days for you to create a habit. But what's interesting about what you're saying is that that might not be the case at all, but it's got to be this consistent thing that you keep driving at. You can't Every just say, day. oh, I've got three months, so now the habit's done and off I can go and carry on as I was. Because you won't. Right. I mean, for me, you know, when they say to me, because there are all these different theories, oh, a month, 30 days, 40 days. No, I don't know why 40 days, but anyway, 90 days. In your case, you're saying 100. Um, I say, well, yes, it's helpful because you're developing neuro pathways. Okay. But the truth of the matter is, is that even if you've got neuro pathways developed, it doesn't mean that you're going to do the thing. Yes. I mean, you know, you can still stay in bed because, oh, yes, I've developed 100 days, I've developed my neuro pathways, and I'm going to stay in bed from now on. <clears throat> Don't want to get up. It's raining outside. Yes. So, which comes to the next point is if I'm trying to do a habit, the one thing is it, it does need to be every day. And how to create a habit? I have to do it every day. If I do it intermittently, very, very hard to, to maintain, sustain, develop. So yep. late, late wake-ups on the weekend, not going to work. Well, you know, <laughs> fundamentally, the answer is no. Okay. What I do, and, you know, I apparently am one of the masters of habit. <laughs> what I do is, I mean, I'm getting up at quarter to five, five o'clock. I have a 15-minute grace period. And um, just because I'm generous with myself, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is, is that if I wake up in the morning on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning and I'm up at five, let's just say it's the latest is five and I'm still tired and I want to sleep, I will get up. I will go and make some, myself something to drink or have something to drink, get up, be up and then go back to bed. Okay. And if I'm that tired, I'll go straight back to sleep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If I'm not that tired, I'll get up. Excellent. Interesting. Mm -hmm. mm. So, for me, that's why we have to do it every day, because it's so easy to get out of the habit. It's, I mean, it's 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 the easiest thing, and that's one of the reasons why. You know, there've been songs and musicals and all sorts of things written about how everyone hates Mondays. Yes. <laughs> why? And I mean, think about it. It's because they. You know, let's suppose they start their habit on Monday, Monday and by Tuesday and by Wednesday, by Thursday. Um, so, oh, we'll just relax a bit. Friday, oh, it's late night. Let's go for it. And Saturday, we go, oh, we can't get up. It's two. We went to bed at three. Can't get up at five. Oh, or we went to bed at uh, whatever time. And then, and then, of course, Saturday is party time again. And then so I will just stay in bed the whole day Sunday. Monday morning comes around and it's just like, you are crazy. You think you want to get up at six in the morning? Are you insane? I need sleep. Yes. And so <laughs> if we have to get to work by eight, you know, people get up at like half past seven and go, right, what do I got to do? And they're all in a big panic, jump in the car and rush off to work or however they do it. You know? Yes. <laughs> so therein lies a massive issue. Weekends cause so much chaos. The other thing that causes chaos is holidays. Exactly. Because usually when we go on holiday it's a time to relax of course and but if we want to oh yes that drink. too but let's not go there for a second <laughs> that's that we you know we're gonna we're gonna upset everyone if we go there but <laughs> okay. imagine if imagine if we wanted to keep our in, inverted commas fitness regime going and even if we just changed it from six to seven perhaps just for that three weeks or two weeks and we still got up I mean, personally, I'm, you know, it's holidays are just about starting now and I'm still going to be getting up at my normal time because in my world, it's easier. And yeah. I have a whole bunch of things that I expect myself to do, um, you know, prior to the, the rest of the family getting up. Mm. So, um, and, you know, I, I like a quiet time and, you know, the family's up, it's chaos. So um, uh, I'd give myself an hour and a half or two 
during the week, uh, you know, weekends, whatever, I get a little bit longer during, you know, over the weekends because they will sleep a little longer and I don't blame them. <sighs> Gives me more space. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so I wonder whether my wife's going to listen to this. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> no, I mean, she knows, you know, she's part of this process, so it's fine. Um, I think, um, you know, the, the reality is that consistency is the imperative. The linking is also imperative. As I say, why it's hard uh, as an early morning start is because there's, there is, you're going from in bed to out of bed. Mm. And in bed, there's a state of inertia. Yeah? Yes. Um, so it's easy just to stay still. Whereas if you were saying to yourself, you know what? Before my shower, I'm going to go for a run. Then it wouldn't matter what time you got up. Yes. Do you see the thing? It's like, before my shower, I must go for a run because I don't want to come, go for a run and then have a sh another shower or whatever. You know? Yes. So it's, the hard part is get up, go exercise. And Because you're, you're sta it's a standing start. It's a, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're basically, you know, just there's no movement. So, does, I mean, does that make sense? Yes. And also what I'm kind of picking up here, Peter, is, you know, I think about it when I'm running trainings and I have mm. to get up at 4.35, 6, whatever it is, there's no question mm. in my mind. I get up and mm -hmm. I do what I need to do. So mm. perhaps there's also what comes into this is how deeply you value that new habit. Mm. Of course. But also... Um, it's got to do with an external thing. So let's suppose you want to get fit because you want to get all hot and sexy. Right. You know? Love that. So it's, so it's like, oh, I need to lose five pounds. So I'm going to go get fit so that I can walk on the beach in my bikini <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like, that's the external motivator. Or my partner's told me I need to lose some weight because I'm looking like a lump. Okay, that's a good, you know, reason. And then to he get gets up. the backhand. <laughs> you are <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying. It's just like the the reality is, um, fundamentally, um, you know, th there needs to be an external motivator um, and a better reason why. So you can say values, and you know, I value fitness, but I don't feel like getting out of bed. But if my friend says I'll meet you on the beach, it's like, oh, okay. Yes. Or if my if my my child says, um, "Come on, Dad, let's go." Oh, okay. Or the dog needs to go for a run. Or do you know what I'm saying? If there's something outside of myself, it makes it a lot easier. And would you yeah. say it's necessary if you are trying to create these new habits that you have to sit down and write down, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 100 reasons why this new habit is necessary? Do you think that helps? Very helpful. It's very helpful, but if there's no one to share that with, and there's no no one that you're accountable to, then you you, you will. It's less likely you'll do it. Got you. So, um, and you know this is why the buddy system works so well. Yes. Um, and why you know people go and have trainers in the gym. Why? Because oh, I've got to go and see my trainer now. <sighs> <laughs> You know, yes. Yeah. Um, because yeah. I, you know I got to. Otherwise, they're going to be upset with me or angry with me or whatever. Oh, okay, I'm going. Or um, I still have to pay for that lesson. <laughs> well, of course, that too. <laughs> um, so, so, I think you know if we go back to our early morning thing, a couple of of, of things here. One is we must be careful of gradient. Got gotcha. you. Two, we must pre-prepare. Um, as in get our togs out and whatever it is. Yes. And, and so that there's no excuses. Three, we must have a mechanism to actually get us out of bed. And, you know, half a dozen alarms could be the thing. You know? gotcha. Obviously, if you've got a person that will, is going to meet you there, even better. You know? yes. And, you know, the gradient so important you can't, if you just go from you know eight o'clock to six o'clock the system will go you're joking of course yes <laughs> you know of course it's gonna you know 
So I think that therein lies a, a, a big, uh, a, a very important, I mean, I teach a lot about gradient. No one seems to teach gradient, um, no. but it's such an important piece. You're the, you're um, the first person that's mentioned this and it just makes mm. so much sense. Mm. You know, not yeah. this complete so, shock factor. Mm. Yeah, the shock factor, I mean, the system, you see, what, I, what people forget is that our bodies are a system in, the, in and of themselves. And if the system is used to doing something, then it's a lot easier to mobilize it. Right. Yeah. So, and, you know, for me, a system is, you know, getting the, the body to go, oh, it's time to wake up. You know, I set my alarms for half past four and quarter to five. That's my, my thing. Nine times out of 10, I'm awake before the alarm actually goes off. And I lie there waiting for it. Yes. And then I go, oh, I've got another 20 minutes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, and it could be seven o'clock in the morning. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm, I'm crazy when, when they tell me, when I, when I tell people that that's what I do, you know, it, I get a bit early, so it's, you know, but I think the, the, um, the imperative is that consistency. Got you. Um, so that's that. Um, and then, you know, um, I think the, the other thing is, is that if you, if it's something that you want to slot in, you know, a lot of people go, I'm going to form a new habit um, in the morning. They forget to link it, going back to the lady and the toothbrush. Yes. You know, so it could be, I need to do, um, I don't know, physical exercise, mental exercise, or I need to remember to phone my mother or I don't know, a hundred things. Um, so it's at my tea break, before I have my tea break, I phone my mother, for example. Yeah. You know? And you link it to the tea break. And, you know, again, the tricky part is, is if I'm having my tea break at 10 o'clock at the office um, and it's Saturday and I'm not having, you know, or Saturday or Sunday, I'm not having my tea break. Now I'm not going to phone my mother. Yes. So it, if we can make it that it happens throughout the day, every day, no matter what. And usually those links are um, ablutions. Most people will do that every day. <laughs> um, shower, which is separate. <laughs> um, eating food, um, breakfast, lunch, dinner sometimes. I mean, sometimes people only eat one meal a day, but you know, there's that. Um, obviously getting up and going to bed. These are all the things that we tend to do. Yes. Um, getting dressed driving the car, you know, there are often there are things that people do consistently anyway. Yes. Um, popping down to the shops, you know, these are the things, if they do them every day, it's easy to link this thing, whatever it is, with the thing that's pre-existing. Right, right. Um, so yeah, you know, if you wanna, you wanna get up, gradient. If you wanna get up, get the alarm so that you you have to get up to put them off yeah otherwise you won't um and have somebody that you are accountable to so make it a game um you know one of the things is that we it's all so serious make it a game everything in my world is has to be a game yeah. you know if i ever grow if i ever, ever if i ever grow up and become a what i call a grup um, i'm in big trouble because otherwise it's so serious. Oh, you've got to get up at six o'clock, you know. Oh, oh, that's how it is. Oh, go on. I could swear now, but I won't. <laughs> yes. You know. <laughs> and so lighthearted, fun, you know, come on, let's party. Yes. Um, and I'm also mm. seeing a, a sort of gap here because usually I get up and I walk straight to the coffee machine and I put that on and then I get back in bed while I have that. So Ooh. I should set the alarm clocks from the alarm clocks, maybe go get the coffee, bring the coffee back to bed, have my coffee, and then I jump into the next, which is changing and meeting my new training pull and off I go. Mm -mm. No, get up, get into your training clothes. Yeah. Okay. Have your coffee. Okay. In the kitchen. Yes. And then leave. <laughs> you mean getting back into bed is the danger zone <laughs> exactly oh, i'll just lie here for five minutes because now we're back to inertia 
Yes. So if you did that, then you'd have to have another set of alarms to kick you out of bed. Got you. Got you. Just because you're going back to that familiar warm place. Yes. And then, and then there's this other, the last element, um, you know, to this, which is, unfortunately, and this country is not so bad, but over, overseas, it's, it's, it's much harder, is that if you're trying to have a consistent habit of, let's say it's exercise, it needs to be weatherproof. Interesting. Well, think about it. If I'm trying to be consistent and uh, it's pouring with rain, am I going to go and run on the prom? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. In the UK, you know, which is where I did a lot of work, people, you know, it gets, it gets icy, it becomes dangerous. So, you know, when I was over there, one of the things, I mean, I used to love, you know, running, running in the cool weather, but the moment it got icy, I would then revert to my treadmill, which I had um, in the house. Yeah. Well, not everybody can do that, but you know, I, yeah. you know, <laughs> I would go either go for an open air run or a treadmill run. Yes. I had I had that option, so which then made it weatherproof. It's not yeah. exactly the same, obviously, indoor run, ugh, but it's better than nothing. Yes. So whatever the the habit is, because when winter comes and it gets dark and cold and oh. Uh, you know, who's going to get up at half past six and go for a run in the prom? Mm, not too many people. Yes. And yes, you get the hardy ones, but those are the ones that are, you know, absolutely committed because they're about to do a marathon or something. Yes. But, yeah. you know, so I don't know. Does that, does that all make sense? It makes huge sense. I've actually made a couple of notes here. So the one, the first hmm. thing that sticks out for me is find the accountability Find the purpose, mm -hmm. the reason, and the accountability, because that mm -hmm. will be your sort of first motivation. The external, external motivator. The external motivator, exactly. Then mm -hmm. pre-prepare, lay out mm -hmm. the clothes or lay out the shoes or whatever. So already you've set in your mind a conscious mm -hmm. thing that you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. and then attach it to a pre-existing habit, which I loved, because then it's not mm -hmm. trying to create a solitary habit. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then make sure that you're doing it in gradients, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit easier. And then make sure that you can actually do it every day. And in this case, make sure that it's weatherproof. Yeah, because you know, otherwise you have a problem. Yeah. So, um, and and also, um, it's that Monday to Friday thing. Make it consistent. It's where a lot of people. Yeah, and that, that's it's very hard for people to do it. You know. Um, over the weekends too and it, then it becomes the, then you have that inertia of um, you know it's Monday again oh, really do I have to <sighs> I need to have a chat with my husband about that because he just can't do Mondays and it all makes so much sense now <laughs> yeah so you know there, there we go you know it's it's really um, it, it, it's really about um you know, trying to push through the weekends as well. Yes. Um, and, you know, because we're a system, you know, we, we obey certain rules. We need a certain amount of sleep. Um, and so if we go and we stay out late on Saturdays and Fridays and Saturdays, which is, hey, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but then still get up at six or seven. Yes. And then if you're, st you're tired, you go back to bed because then the system stays used to, that's the time we get up. Right. And, oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Yes, get up, have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Then go back to bed. Yes. Because Got you me. can. Got you. And people go, really? Is it that? It is, I mean, is that necessary? If you want the system to, to be aware that that's what you're doing every day. And then Mondays to Fridays, it's so much easier. Right. Hmm. So I suppose, Peter, I mean, we've, we've summarized this really nicely. And I think before we close off, maybe the last Ooh. question I have for you is what has been one of the most inspiring stories or, or people you've worked with where the story just was incredibly motivating and inspiring and something that maybe the listeners can also learn from? Whew. Inspiring story of the year. You know, or the decade. 
<laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, gosh, so many stories. Um, well, uh, I mean, this is going to sound like a radical story. Um, is I had a client who came to me, and I have to say, she was absolutely drop dead gorgeous. So um, that was just one thing. So absolutely, it's important to be aware of that. Okay. And she walks in and she says to me, Peter, I have a problem with relationships. I was like, what? She said, no, I re seriously have a problem with relationships. I said, but I don't understand. She says, let me explain. I don't have a problem getting them. And I go, yeah, I can see that. She says, there's always, there are always men floating around. <laughs> I go, uh-huh, yeah, I get that. You know, <laughs> I mean, this woman was absolutely beautiful and everything and I mean everything in the right place and la 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 all that stuff right because I was I mean I was like well, this is a crazy one because you know so I suppose that's why it, it sits in my my one of my top 10 yes anyway long story short she says so I said to her so we had a chat 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 and she says no what happens is that fundamentally you know I'm happy to meet a man and be with someone but after about three or four months I start to actually um, just shut down in fact it, it happens quite suddenly like what she says no you know and then I don't want them anywhere near me so, I said, <laughs> so after three or four months she says yeah yeah and you know so I, I said and then I want to push them away and I shut down and I said so you know when you get to know them she says yeah when they become familiar so I said, oh, okay okay cool so I said, let's just park that there and let's do some history. Anyway, and the history went, and I'm going to do it very fast. She goes, you know, when I was a youngster, I was growing up. And, you know, when I was about 12 or 13, I started developing quite early. I become, became a little lady. And then I was raped three times and abused twice. And then I went to high school. Wow. And I said, sorry, what? What? She said, oh, yeah, another bygones, under the carpet. You know, we don't want to talk about that stuff. I said, oh, did you just hear me? And... Um, she said, oh, all right then. And she's really like, you know, matter of fact. Right. Um, and bearing in mind, this woman was a very successful, high powered lawyer in the UK. And she just wanted to get married and have babies, you know, yeah. and kind of, that's what, she, that was her mission. That's why she came to see me. So I said, just humor me, just let me hear about that. Just, uh, you know, uh, just overview. She said, oh, all right. So I said, you know, so she said, um, well, you know, the first one was, was an uncle and then it was a cousin. And then um, that other person, oh, it was a best friend of a brother. And, and then there was somebody, another cousin, I think. And then somebody else said, oh, we, it was part of the family. Oh, yeah, yoy. So I said, okay, so are you saying that they were all familiar? She goes, yeah. So I said, so here we go. They're all familiar. When the guys become familiar, you shut down. Yes. And she goes, huh? Anyway, so that was the that was where the problem was, and that she uh, it was all these unresolved sitting here with rapes and abuses and stuff. Yes. We spent two and a half hours cleaning all of those up, and um, and she was fine. Made sure, did some sense checks. I'm not again explaining any of that right now, um, because the work I do is unlike. You know, it's, it's not therapeutic per se. It's just cleaning those events up. Don't even have to talk about them. And then um, uh, she kind of had one or two sessions after that and disappeared. Here's the best part of the story. About, I don't know, about a year later, she said, I think I've met Mr. Wright. So I said, oh, yeah. She said, no, I'm getting married. Oh, said, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, and I said, oh, well, well you know, good luck and all that. Um, and she said, yeah, thank you. And off she went. And about a couple of years later, she tracked me down back in Cape Town because this was obviously, I say, obviously, she, I was working with her in the UK. And she said, I'd love to have a couple of sessions. Just want to send you a few pictures. I said, sure, why not? Um, and she sent me some pictures, A, of her wedding day. I mean, and he was, you know, also a nice looking man, let's say. <laughs> you know, they looked incredibly happy together. And then... Yeah. The picture the pictures after was one of twins who looked like mini me's i mean they were just beautiful and then another picture of of, a, of another child who was also just gorgeous and she just said 
you know, I just wanted you to see this because of, you know, how, where I've managed to get to in my life. And I just wanted to say thanks. And we did some more work and she's gone off and done her own thing. So I don't know if that's inspiring. For me, it was very... <laughs> Beautiful. Um, that is absolutely yeah. and well done. Congratulations for, mm. for helping, um, you know, not just but her. She but she did it. People. Yeah, she did it. I mean, you know, I was just holding space for her. That's the point. You're the, cool. um, the instrument or the... There we go. Yeah. The mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, so. Peter. All right. Hopefully that's good enough. Um, and um, people get some benefit out of that. Um, so there we go. Peter, what an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for these 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's been so yeah, yeah. intriguing. And I hope that mm -hmm. not just myself, but other people also take huge information from this. So mm -hmm. for everyone that Brilliant. does hear this, good luck with those New Year's mm -hmm. resolutions. <laughs>